All right, episode three of the Zero Gamers rolling in. Episode three of the Zero Gamers. <laughs> What's going on, gamer Tylenol? Dude, not too much. I uh, I played some Kaizo Ironmon yesterday. It kicked my butt. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty fun, but, you, you know, you like outside it, of the butt kicking. Yeah, it's fun. I like it. Nice, I nice. I think it's pretty, it's pretty good, like, to stream, I think, just because there's a lot of ways to get chat involved in what you're doing, as yeah. well as just, like, it being a difficult challenge, which I am usually attracted to that type of thing in general so i never did the fun. kaizo version of the iron man uh mm -hmm. i did the regular version but like i thought that like when i did the regular version like i had my fill of like the the iron man experience but like kaizo right, really yeah. like puts this on another level like for, for those of you guys who don't know <laughs> like essentially uh the iron man is kind of like uh, a nozlog but with like a few key differences and the kaizo iron man is like extra uh restrictions and uh difficulties on top of that that's like the hardest setting you can do this uh challenge on yeah one of the big differences between the two is like in nuzlocke you can farm wild pokemon and that's one of the things i personally didn't love about it because it's like was a nuzlocke really that hard if you could just farm wild pokemon until you were level 100 to beat it like yeah yeah it's not really that hard if you just did that right mm -hmm. but like um this uh restricts you to where you can't kill I, I think it's like you can kill or catch one wild pokemon per area and that's it like and that's all the experience you're getting in the kaiser variant you can't kill any wild pokemon yeah yeah um, like so. i think yeah i think like the uh the basic restriction is that like y you are only allowed to catch one pokemon per route but like uh the the rule set allows you to like kill one if like you kill it by accident right yeah like you try to okay. catch the pokemon but like you kill it by accident and like you have like you can get that experience but you have to like forego the the capture that area. for that route essentially exactly yeah cool so we got some we got some questions yeah yeah so like thanks for posting questions in the comments last week gamers we appreciate that uh so you can consider this the uh, the q a segment of the podcast like we're, we're gonna have like maybe a fancy like in intro screen to that segment eventually eventually but uh eventually. yeah that, like like i mentioned uh last week like me and donald mentioned last <laughs> week like we, we really want this to like be a recurring segment on the podcast so like keep the, those yeah. questions coming uh we love them if we have enough for like one of those segments every single week like that would be really awesome and Heck uh, yeah starting with uh catherine asking what's your favorite british word slash line <laughs> <laughs> i want to say it but <laughs> say it say it bloody hell <laughs> it's it's funny because that's the one i was gonna say too <laughs> what crazy <laughs> yeah really makes you think it really just makes you think. Yeah, great great minds think alike, really. <laughs> okay. That's a very good Ana one. Another one from uh, Sheena. Most of speedrunning is mental, right? So how do you improve that? That's a good question. Oh, there's so many answers because people people are also different, right? People have different responses to what happens to them in their attempts or whatever, and like I agree. Like, I think most of speedrunning is mental, and, like, a lot of it comes down to, like, understanding yourself, kind of? Like, how you... Like, because if you're, if you're grinding and it's, like, you know, like, for example, some people might kind of, like, not get too upset, but they mostly kind of are apathetic about their attempts, like, ah, oh, I don't really... You know, it's kind of whatever, I'm just playing to play. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe the, maybe they're kind of falling back on improvement because of that, or, and then some people are trying really hard, and they might, might be getting, like, super upset, right? And then there's, like, that's a whole different approach of, like, how you fix each of those things, right? Um, so I, I do think, like, one thing, at least from my experience, is that, like, every single time you boot up the game and play, there is something of value to take from that yep. all the time. And I think it's important to just, like, kind of take your attempts in and just be like, okay, today I had a bunch of crappy attempts and I felt pretty bad throughout all of them it's like but you pushed through it you did attempts for however long you know whatever it was a two hour session a three hour session or whatever and you got through that and just because today's attempts were that way doesn't mean tomorrow's has to be as as well which is an easy trap to fall into mentally oh I yeah think. oh yeah absolutely and like i'm not gonna pretend to like have all the answers to that because like you know it's it's it, it, it's, some, it's something that like every speed owner struggles with and like you said like nice. the experience is going to be different for each and every uh 
one of them. Like mm-hmm. the way one reacts to uh, how runs go uh, is going to be different from like the way someone else reacts to them. So like, yeah, yeah exactly. it's really like, I want to say like the best, advice is like really like knowing yourself and knowing like how you react to those points because then like it's going to be easier to you know pinpoint them and focus and like improve on them really yeah like and like something that's easy to kind of like like forget about is like i don't know some people they can't play five days a week for example and do runs that often some people they can only really do like three and it's like if that's what's best for you then it's good to Try, try that and recognize that some people they just love doing a bunch of practice and barely any runs and then they do some you know they do some runs every now and then and they just mostly focus on practice that might be for them too you know so it's like it i'd say experiment some with some things to kind of get an idea how you respond to these things mentally mm-hmm. and kind of like pinpoint the things that you're thinking as you're as you're playing and be like oh i feel tired or i feel frustrated because sometimes maybe you just aren't getting enough sleep you know for example like yeah sometimes, and that, sometimes that it can be like ju- just as easy as like you're not feeling like your best uh physically and that affects your mentality like mm-hmm. when you're going for speed runs like I, I know that's my case like whenever like i feel sick and i do speed runs like i get like way more irritable <laughs> yep Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's, that's the case for you too, but yeah, no, it is. Like <laughs> I get way more irritated. The other day I did attempts and I was just like so a- agitated as I was doing them, and it was it was because I was just so tired, man. Mm-hmm. Like I was really exhausted, and it just made it so that my aggravatedness, if you will, just yeah. came in <laughs> way faster. Like I was just like, oh, yeah. and I had to stop sooner because of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a word, mm-hmm. right? Aggravatedness. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't speak English. <laughs> Neither All right. do I. Uh, Scotty D asks, why did you decide to run the categories you've run and what are your favorites? Uh, so, at least for me personally, like, uh, I started with... My first speed game and my first speed run was uh, DKC All Stages. And I picked it up because, honestly, it was the most ran category at the time. It still is, like, the most, like ran uh dkc1 category although like no major glitches is like slowly creeping up there as right. like a uh, a runner's favorite but like in the back in the day uh no major glitches was not a category that existed yet and mm-hmm. uh all stages was really like the like i guess uh gold standard when you wanted to like compare yourself with uh other runners uh in that game so like it was pretty much for competition, really. Like, yeah, yeah. gravitated towards that category because <laughs> if you were running DKC one, then you were running all stages, really. Yeah. Um, my first ran category was Sonic Adventure Two Hero Story, um, which I that was that was the, my first time ever trying out speed running. When I wanted to get into speed running, I was just like. Oh, there's so many games. I like so many games. I don't know what to run. And DKC, I was, it was gonna be my first choice, but it was on the list of many first choices that I wasn't really sure about. Mm. Um, I watched the world record for Sonic Adventure 2: Hero Story, and I saw a trick called uh, Snake Snake Skip uh, in Pyramid Cave, which there's like this crazy, like oscillated uh or like a sideways gravity bounce thing that you do and it's like it skips this whole segment and you run on a wall and i'm like what is this this is insane like i thought it was the coolest thing ever i'm like i this is the game i have to run this game because when i saw that i was just like so like impressed by it it turns out that trick only saves like four seconds which or something like that at least like not not as much as i thought it was when i first saw it but that just impressed me so much and i i ended up trying it out because of that um and i think more i gravitated more towards hero story instead of like the other categories in sonic adventure 2 like dark and all stories and stuff just because i was like well that's kind of like the main source like you were saying with all stages in the competition yeah. that was kind of just like where everyone else was playing and i was like oh well when other people are playing something it's like you can kind of compare your times to other people people are actively playing you can chat with people about strategies and stuff and like <clears throat> try to get better with others and it kind of just makes it more of like a group activity as well as being co- competition it, which yeah, makes it yeah. a lot more fun and I, that's, that's like one of my favorite aspects in speedrunning like it's it's still to this day like what uh keeps bringing me back to it it's just like the 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 camaraderie really 
Yeah, the homies. Yeah, <laughs> speed running with the homies. Speed running with the homies. But yeah, so so I guess actually you just you, you you got starstruck by that trick. It really was just that trick. Like I saw a bunch of other crazy tricks too, but that one in particular, I was like, oh, this is yeah. insane. I can't even but... say I got like starstruck by like a trick in a donkey game. I just want to, you know, I want I wanted to speed run DKC because I like DKC and just like yeah. it just so happened that like oh this game has jump rolls. Oh jump rolls suck. Oh right, cool. <laughs> let's, let's keep moving forward. It's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter. It's it's fine. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. All right. Uh... Next question from Wulu. Uh, Wulu has actually a few. Um, he has, what are your favorite way to prepare eggs? Over medium, scrambled, hard boiled, Benedict, omelet, etc. You, you have an egg preference, Tylenol? I used to do omelets, but I'm not a cheese guy, so I would do omelets that were empty. <laughs> oh, interesting. With, not, with nothing inside of them. Uh, just because it was like, I don't know, like I like the texture of just, yeah, like, yeah, just being the able texture to cut of into the, it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Texture of scrambled uh, eggs, pretty much. Yeah, kind of, yeah. yeah. And uh, that I ended up doing like uh, scrambled eggs a little bit more afterwards, just because they're a lot easier to just kind of throw together, at yeah, least in my yeah. experience, so... See, see, yeah. like me, me, I'm a, I'm a sunny side up kind of guy because oh, it's, yeah? just, it's, it's just like easy. You just crack the egg, you fry it, and just like, and also like uh, the the running yolk, it's tasty. Yeah, yeah, I, I can I can see that. Yeah, what about what about waffles, pancakes, or French toast then? Oh, French toast is so good. <laughs> You're French, French team so French much. toast. Yeah, I'm a French toaster. Uh, well, I'm I'm gonna disappoint you. I'm team waffle. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that reminds me of that uh, that thing that Pi did forever ago, where he had like uh, waffles versus French toast. It was like a oh. Discord Wars kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, Discord Wars. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was it coffee versus uh, tea? Was it one of the other ones? I think that he did. Maybe I'm not aware of that one. I know the most recent one was dogs versus cats, which, which is a classic. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, super, I, I, I did. I did fun. like the, the the team waffles versus team French toast. Heck yeah! Uh, what what about this last one from Wulu? Uh, he's asking Wulu or in parentheses Faker Mareep. Wait, what is? Wait, I don't get it. Ah, uh, Wulu is Wulu. a Pokemon. Is it the Alolan form or something? No, it's or... from like a newer gen. See, that's why I don't know what it is. <laughs> so I'm just, yeah. like, I'm just like, what? So I guess, I guess. Uh, Faker Mareep might actually be the one that, because it's the one I recognize, yeah, yeah. it's the one I have to pick, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the one you have by default, yeah, if you don't yeah. know Wulu. Yeah, I what think Wulu is like a, uh, I want to say it's a Gen 8 Pokemon, but like... Yeah, that makes sense. I, 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 I don't familiar. know, because like, I, I haven't made it there with my, my casual Pokemon playthroughs yet. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm only up to, I, I played Gen 5, but I only got 8 badges and just kind of stopped but <laughs> you, 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 how, how can you like get all the badges and, and and not even like go challenge the Pokemon League? Come on, you're right there, man. I don't know, man. I just kind of was like, oh, I I, I kind of want to go play some Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> and then I put the Nintendo DS down, and then it's been it's been just so long ever since. That's funny. Hey, uh, <laughs> you know, I got eight badges. Uh, consider me the champion already. And then let me go back to my, this jump roll practice. I'm basically the champion at that point. Right? <laughs> yeah, basically the champion. Uh, as for me, well, yeah, I'll have to go with uh, Mareep as well. So sorry, Wulu. Um... I'm I'm going with with Mareep because uh, I like Ampharos. There you go. Uh, Mareep yeah. was also my first shiny Pokemon. Fun fact. Oh really? Yeah, I got a pink level twenty female Mareep. That was my first shiny, and Damn. then Gen two in Pokemon Gold. Nice run, nice run. Yeah. I want I want to say like my first shiny. So okay, I I have a funny shiny story because like I want to say my first shiny that I encountered in uh, Pokemon Silver was a male Nidoran. Right. Oh yeah. But the male Nidoran shiny is blue, right? So I think. Oh, like you my, thought. <laughs> I, I want to say like my eight-year-old brain didn't process the fact that it was a shiny and just thought it was like a female Nidoran, and yeah. I just ran away. <laughs> <laughs> Literally debated. That is too yep, funny. <laughs> I wish. I wish I were colorblind. <laughs> All right. All right, so next question from Renault. Uh, he's asking, if you could transfer your knowledge and experience 
of running DKC into another game, like running it at a top level without putting the effort, what game would it be? Mm. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, so essentially, <laughs> like, w which game do you want to run, but you're too lazy to run at the moment? Kind of, yeah. yeah. Also, just, like, be automatically good at it kind yeah. is kind of the idea, too, right? Mm -hmm. yep. uh, so I guess, like... Hmm... Because I've wanted to run Ocarina of Time 100% for, like, a while, but I was very intimidated by, like, all of the stuff that you'd have to learn and how long it would take me to grind all that stuff out, um, I feel like that would probably be my pick if I could just automatically be good at, like, the Hesses and, like, yeah. all the clips or whatever and glitches and wrong warps. Like, I, if I could just do all that stuff automatically... I'd be set, right? I could just do runs, and then, yeah. it, and then you know, it'd be like a lot easier that way. So. That's that's the oh, thing. Like that, that run is just so long. Like I know, yep. I know, I, just, like, I don't know how low the the record is at that point, but I remember like when I actively watched OT runs, uh, it was like over four hours long. Yeah, I think the no SRM category is like three hours forty something minutes. Okay, you know? so it's it's. it's it still went down like a lot back from like when I used to watch. Like when, when I used to watch OT, Hondo on the regular was like back when Clint Stevens was still playing OT. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that was a little while ago. But uh, as no. for me, uh, I'm gonna have to say uh, that the game I would love to run without putting in the effort would be the the best game in the world aka metroid prime for the nintendo game metroid prime let's go yeah, have you played metroid like... prime yeah i love that game yeah hell yeah the game is amazing yeah i haven't played metroid prime 3 oh but, that's uh... fine <laughs> <laughs> i've heard you know i i played it a little bit but like i got lost in this is like so many years ago i want to say it's like four or five years ago i started playing metroid prime 3 i got stuck somewhere and then i was like man do i really want to pick up my rear remote and nunchuck and try that again i'm like not exactly so i just kind of like never really got back to it gotcha you, gotcha you, yeah but yeah. like yeah like prime 3 pretty medium compared to prime 1 and prime 2 which are uh, yeah. goaded games real honestly yeah. like Definitely, like, some of the best uh, GameCube games and would recommend to anyone who hasn't played them. But, yeah, Agreed. like, I tried running Prime back in the day. Like, I tried picking it up, but that was, like, a long, long time ago. Like, I think, like, mm -hmm. 2014, 2015 kind of deal. Like, I right. the, the practice hack wasn't a thing. Like, I didn't, ha I didn't even have, like, an adapter to play on the emulator with, like, practice stuff. Mm -hmm. So I would just, like, you know, go through, uh, like, frigate and chose the ruins on console like I, I learned the game up to flagra which is the first boss yeah and i just stopped at that point because i was like man this, this this game is hard man what the fuck <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and it actually really is really hard like you watch you watch mm -hmm. top runners run prime and it's, it's just mild blowing really they make it look so easy they do make it look so easy like you know like gamer uh justin dm yeah justin DM. <laughs> like like you know you know how we me and you make it look easy when we play dkc then like they right. make it easy playing a 3d game like it's it's a whole mm -hmm. new dimension it's a whole extra dimension yeah yeah the 3d oh, the, the the third dimension is impossible allegedly yeah all right another question from lime uh, asking what non speedrun related things have influenced you have influenced how you speedrun slash practice and how has speedrunning influenced your life outside of gaming? Ooh. Man. Um for me, I mean I have a background in like playing uh other games competitively, so I played like melee competitively, I played Yu-Gi-Oh competitively. And some people might not know this, but I took drumline very seriously, which uh, kind of all of those things, like maybe not so much Yu-Gi-Oh, but Melee and Drumline, um, they have a lot of like demanding things that you have to do practice wise in order to be able to perform at your honestly, I wouldn't even say your best, even just to perform at your set at your 70% skill or something, you know, <laughs> like, like, like you really, they're very demanding. You really have to put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of practice into it, a very repetitive. And it's, uh, it's very, it's very hands-on. And I think that because of that, I kind of, when I came into speed running, I, I'm not going to say like, oh, this is so much easier or whatever, but like, it, it is a little bit like easier to kind of like 
gauge how your progress like with your pbs and stuff whereas like when i was playing like drumline it's kind of like oh i played well today great but there's still a next time or melee is like oh i won this tournament but there's still the next tournament yeah you know? speed running is kind of like your, your results like when you finally get a pb or whatever it's kind of just there which helps you know the mental a bit at least for me um mm-hmm. for like feeling like I'm, I'm making like actual progress there, um, there like there is a tangible reward uh that you yeah. get quicker i guess yeah exactly but um yeah uh it's it's funny that you bring like uh the drum line uh point because i used to play guitar i mean i still do but like a lot less regularly like in high school right. i played a lot of guitar and like i've always compared speedrunning to playing a song really like you, you, know, mm-hmm. you learn a song on a guitar it's just like you want to like you know really like nail the timing nail like the the, the notes all of that stuff like you want to like tighten it up like as much as possible and like make it sound as clean as possible and like i really like took a lot of what I learned from playing music and I applied it to speedrunning and I was like, this is, this is exactly the same thing. Like, you know, you learn, you learn a run. It's like learning a song and like, you want to like learn, like nail this trick. It's like learn nailing a hard solo or whatever. And yep. like, it's, you know, it, you have the same like feeling of satisfaction when you like nail a hard song than when you get a PB. And like, mm-hmm. I really, I, I really thought that was awesome. <laughs> and like, it really helped me transition from, you know, playing a lot of music in high school and like in my uh late teens early 20s to like really like focusing on speedrunning as much as i ended up doing yeah no exactly and like yeah um, like competitive game wise like i also played Yu Gi Oh. i played magic the gathering but like yeah less there are less parallels to uh those games uh and speedrunning than there are with speedrunning and playing music in my opinion yeah i agree I 100% agree with you. Um, the the fact that like there's so many different things that would happen to you and it's w- a little bit less repetitive. Cause speedrunning is quite literally you're doing the same levels over and over again and trying to just do them better than you did last time. Yep. And it's, it's so that's kind of just that constant battle. But like if you're playing like a fighting game, it's like sure you're playing the same character or whatever, but like you're gonna be introduced to these incredibly unique situations over and over again that you have to figure out how to kind of tackle. Um. But I think that, like, all of those things can kind of help me for figuring out how to practice, I would say, is the big thing that I've learned from all those things, how to practice and how to, like, improve. Yeah. Um, Le- learning how to practice is, is huge, honestly. It's like, because yeah. it's another one of those things that's going to be different from, like, uh, each and every uh, runner. It's like, if you, like, can figure out, like, your practice rhythm and, like, really focus on that and improve on that and like you know you get you get settled into like this rhythm and like uh this method really like that's it's gonna help you a lot yeah, versus absolutely. like just following some basic template that like someone that you might not even know recommended to you like it's really like you know each and every individual uh runner will have their own like practice methods yes exactly all right Got one last question from Stellar asking, what's the runner culture like for a game with no required verification? Does it make people suspicious of their fellow runners or how does the community deal with that? And that's a really good question and I really like mm-hmm. it because for the, the, the listeners who don't know, uh, the DKC community uh, doesn't like verify runs when they're submitted to the leaderboards. Like they're submitted... Mm-hmm. Uh, on the uh, runners, uh, like per, per the runner's choice, and like right. uh, you, normally for like uh, speedrun.com leaderboards, uh, they get uh, verified and approved by a moderator. But like the DKC community, we decided to skip that process to kind of mirror the fact that that was already done. So when we used to have the leaderboards on the DKC wiki, DKC speedruns, by the way, uh, DKC speedruns.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to learn speed the runs. DKC games, uh, please check that out. Uh, link in the description below. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, what are your thoughts on that actually, Tano? Yeah, I, well, for me, like, you know, being a runner, it's like, I look at it and I'm just like, oh, I get to submit my time sooner. That's pretty cool. You mm-hmm. know, I get the instant dopamine release of I'm this place. I got the PB. I get the, yeah, <laughs> there <laughs> yeah. I go. I'm on speedrun.com. Let's go. <laughs> I, made, I made it to the top of the leaderboards, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, I, I think that as far as the culture is concerned, I mean, the DKC community is 
so lax. We're mm. we I, I think I think we're a very, very chill speedrun community. And like I wanna say that because of that we I, I as far as like the whole suspicious or whatever for fellow runners i don't think anyone really it, unless something someone has to do something i don't think anyone's gonna be like oh like that's weird or whatever when people submit because when people submit it's kind of like oh, okay cool congrats mm-hmm. on your pb you know people post their splits in general chat and we're just like oh nice run you know yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, and, that, and that's kind of that it's uh it's pretty lax um i like that we were able to do that with basically no problems um now, I mean, granted, we every every once in a blue moon we get somebody that just submits uh, like a Rickroll video in a one second time or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> the the occasional troll submission, but I mean, yeah. like it's it, it's it's so uncommon that it's just not worth uh, locking up the boards over that. Yeah, it's like and like it, it's kind of just like one person can just ruin all the fun, right? It's like exactly. It's, exactly. it's really nice that we can do that. But if someone did kind of give us a hard time about that, then that would change, you know, possibly change things, right? Um, and yeah, I, I think that it's really cool that we were able to do that uh, because of how chill we are. Because it's it's possible that certain other communities might not be able to do that, you know? Yeah, um, like usually, it, it, I think we also benefit from like, the fact that we have a, a bit of a smaller community. Like if true. you yeah, were if true. you were to apply uh, no verification leaderboards to a community like Ocarina of Time or Super Mario sixty four, like that'd be that'd be kind of crazy. I don't know if it would work. I don't know if that would work at all. Sadly, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, as a matter of fact, I don't. I think it would not work to the degree in which it would be impossible to keep up with <laughs> as a moderator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like being a speedrun.com moderator is really like a thankless job. Like you, yep. <laughs> you, 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 you verify you verify runs. Like you get nothing in return. All you, uh, actually like what you get in return is people like nagging you about hey <laughs> uh, can I can my run be verified? Like please, I really want to like be a hundred and seventy seventh on the leaderboards. Please, please. Yeah, it's like verify the run. Hurry up. Yeah. <laughs> hurry, hurry up, bitch. Like I'm not I'm not paying you, but hurry up. Not paying you. Hurry up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. like I. I do like that fact, and like uh, we also we, we touched a little bit uh, on that topic last week when you talk about like cheated runs and speedrunning. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, usually when a suspicious run gets brought up, like it, it, it's dealt with, like it's it's scrutinized by the community, and like for like it, it, it's another thing I mentioned too last week. It's like if you cheat. You don't cheat to be like in the middle of the leaderboards. You cheat to be like at the top of the leaderboards. So like. If you come out of nowhere and you put out a strong time right away, then that might like be suspicious, and that yeah. might be worth investigating. And like, yeah, exactly. You know, we 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 do get like personally because like I I do mod the speedrun.com leaderboards, and like I do get sometimes uh, not requests necessarily, but like I get uh, runs brought up to me that like may or may not like follow this or that rule set or like that may look suspicious here and there like that doesn't Mm -hmm. happen often but it still does and like that's just like the community really like bringing up those facts it's like like they don't have to do that they could just like leave a a suspicious run on the leaderboards but like because they do uh want as much as like all that we we all do have like you know uh leaderboards that like you know stick to like the integrity of the hobby then yeah. like it, it, it makes it possible you know yeah exactly there was one situation where like this wasn't somebody who cheated this was just somebody who did something on accident that wasn't allowed in a specific category in dkc1 um but even like uh that if you remember that situation where dlb did the roll in the air jump and no major glitches for 101 um, percent uh he did it, he did it at the very end of mcm uh for the last bonus oh you know, you, yeah yeah you yeah, jump yeah. out you bounce on the tire you do a roll jump in the air like he did that one roll jump in the air mm-hmm. which is a major glitch it's it just is, not it allowed. Is a major glitch and, yeah, and but it it's... saved it probably saved him like nothing right it's <laughs> it, got... it's, it's less than a second maybe like even less than half a second but yeah like, honestly it, it's it, like it is a tiny oversight but it's still there yeah and like 
and somebody somebody noticed that you know like and it and it was i don't know who it was but like it's just like for me i, I there was no way i even if i was watching the whole run start to finish i would that would have i wouldn't have even noticed that like yeah. at all yeah. but somebody still did notice it so people watch you know people and, do watch because like people like learning runs from other runners Mm-hmm. That's another thing that uh, I, I brought up, I think, last week, that, like, you know, the best way to... One of the best ways, at least for me, to learn a speed game is to watch uh, an already established runner uh, yes. do runs or, like, watch their PBs and, like, try to pick up their strats and their movement here and there mm-hmm. and try to apply it myself. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, ultimately, when you're, like... Uh, one of the top runners in a category, like yeah, if you if you make like that uh, mistake, then yeah, inevitably like that's gonna bring uh, bring questions up because like mm-hmm. yeah, everyone's gonna be watching that. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. <sighs> well, well, thank you everybody for the questions. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Got, got a lot of fun con- fun combos out of that. Like uh, how I didn't know who Wulu was, the Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, but man. you'll 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 have to yeah. like do some uh, research now. Uh, some I got Pokemon play, research. Play Gen Eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, um, speaking of Pokemon, I wanted to like go back to like the 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 Kaizo Iron Man discussion that we had earlier. Just like extrapolate a little bit on that, and just like talk about uh, challenge runs in general. Because yeah. like they're really popular nowadays. Like Kaizo Mon, Kaizo Iron Man specifically is like huge at this blowing point. Blowing up, absolutely blowing up. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. Like. Yeah. It's it's like Pi Pi's stream like he gets like what four thousand viewers or something like that now over, over four thousand yeah that's yeah. crazy like I mean Pi was already a very huge streamer don't get me wrong but like that's like double what he used to get I'm mm-hmm. pretty, I'm pretty sure he was he used to be around I want to say I'd usually see him around one point five k viewers like yeah three thousand four thousand that's crazy I want to say that like, like okay it's so like Pi Pi is like a, a really good and really huge uh, variety streamer but like. Yes. Uh, the like the lowest I've seen his numbers are like when he streams like mafia and poker and it's like it's it's still like you know close to one thousand. Yeah, it's, yeah, like, yeah, you know, huge like, streamer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I want to say like on average, it's like yeah, between one point five and two point five k, and like yeah. Kaizo Ramon, like you know, like, now he's at like over four thousand when he does yeah. uh, runs of that. Yeah, it's it is kind of crazy. So, but yeah, like challenge runs, like damageless. That's something that like blew up a lot. I saw on Twitter, like people were like, "Oh, I beat Ocarina of Time without taking any damage," or then Hitless was the other thing where it's like where you like you know, oh well, if you have a shield or whatever, or if you drink a potion that allows you to not take any damage, you know, like you know that those those conversations came up, mm-hmm. right? So yep. it's like, okay, well hitless was the thing i think that people started to kind of convert to at some point that was like the thing that got like a lot uh a lot more attention so like where you don't shield anything that's like unnecessary i guess like in the ocarina of time you have to shield like a digby scrub nut or something that's like guaranteed or like like you're forced to do that but like hitless was like a big thing that kind of came up um that i saw a lot on twitter and i think that those types of runs are really interesting from like the viewers point of view because like when you're watching that it's like okay well it's like ooh I'm waiting for the thing I'm waiting for the thing <laughs> the thing can happen at any time you know yeah it's yeah exactly it, it keeps the viewer on edge yeah exactly and yeah. it can make things really interesting in mm-hmm. that regard um yep. and I mean Kazuo like, Armand also does that like you know you, you, you never really know if like the next fight uh will kill the run you never know if there's going to be an explosion, a destiny bond, a perish song. You just don't know. <laughs> yep, you don't know, man. You don't know. But yeah, like challenge runs, ah, man, like six years ago or seven years ago, like you wouldn't have thought that challenge runs would be like the, the new hotness in the community. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I almost feel like that would have been a thing that like would have been expected to not get a whole lot of viewership, but like instead it kind of is definitely getting that. Oh yeah, it feels uh, like speedrunning is circling back to doing <laughs> challenge runs. You know, it's like we're we're, we're, yeah. we're almost like you know we're almost like fully explored speedrunning as a hobby, and now we're like uh, exploring challenge runs. Yeah, and challenge runs, I I almost feel like for it's it's way easier for like somebody who's new to get into a challenge run rather than like just pick up a speed run because speed you have to learn all the stuff or whatever and like the yeah route. yeah. But like if it's like a game you've already beaten, you know how to beat it. It's like okay, we'll just don't get hit. So that's 
okay, I can try that, you know, like, it's, it's like, if you have to, if you get hit, you start over, it's like, yeah. okay, that's fine, like, I, that's, that's very consumable information for somebody who's brand new, mm-hmm. which is really useful for, like, other people that want to try it out, um, and getting themselves into a reset area, or, like, type of playing a game might end up making a speedrunner, like, become become a speedrunner. Yeah, know? yeah. Or somebody but, become a speedrunner. But it's less gatekeepy in a sense, right? Like, I do agree with you. Like, you know, uh, it's you don't necessarily have to, like, learn a bunch of stuff that is required for speedruns, uh, for specific that specific challenge run. Instead, you can just, like, jump right into it and play the game you want to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, at the same time, like, yeah, def- definitely easier to get into. Yeah. And we're kind of, like, late on this discussion, at least with me bringing this up, but, like, remember how, like, randomizers for, like, every game just yeah, kind yeah. of, like, that, that, came that, out of nowhere? <laughs> I, I actually, like, wanted to, like, bring that up, but then, like, I know, I, I phased out for a second. Like, I, I, <laughs> yeah, randomizers is, like, another, like, good example of, like, yeah, you want to learn get into, like, a game just, like, Play a randomizer, like you know, link to the patch randomizer, like that definitely contributed to like that exploding. Cause like picking up link to the past, like I've ran link to the past before, like that game is easy. That, that game is easy to pick up. Spearing yeah. that game is ridiculous. Like at yeah. a high level, that game is so hard. It's yeah. so optimized. Like every little thing is optimized. Like RNG is optimized and also bullshit and yeah it, it, it's 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 rough it, at a high level like it's it's a really rough speed run but yeah. if you want to like play link to the past and not be gatekept by like tricks and whatnot like or like bad rng from you know agonim giving you five blue balls and oh you have to reset light world hooray like just hooray. yeah just, just just do just do the randomizer like at the same time the <laughs> randomizer is gonna help you get better at moving your guy in that game they say that like people who do randomizers know more about the game than people who speedrun the game. <laughs> well, because of all the different places that you have to go to it, that you it, don't it, even it's, touch it's a, in the speedrun. Yeah, run. it's a different learn set. It's definitely a yeah, different yeah. learn set. Because like, yeah, if we do compare once again, like uh, Link to the Past speedruns and Link to the Past randomizers, like there are areas that you wouldn't go in the speedrun that you do go and randomizer that have, uh, you know, hidden chests that you can like get important items from. So like, yeah. it's a different kind of knowledge, but it's still like, it's still like knowledge of the game. Like re- yeah. no matter what, like, yeah, you'll, you'll have to like have this knowledge of the game to like speed run it, but you need to have like this knowledge of the game to play and complete the randomizer in like a, a, a certain amount of time. Yeah, exactly. There's a Ocarina of Time 100% no SRM run that I did casual race with some friends, um, which was actually a really close race. It was like we were five minutes apart and we took 10 hours. <laughs> wow. So the, the 10 hour was, race, five minutes apart. Huh? Yeah, it was insanely close. But really um, correct. But like when we were doing it, like we played so many Ocarina of Time randomizers that like I could do that run like without a guide. Mm-hmm. Like, I really, I just could, you know, like, cause I was like, I'm so, for me, I'm just like, oh, I just check everything. <laughs> like, uh, I just open every chest yep. and should get every sculpture. Uh, that's it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. easy, you exactly. know, which is kind of funny because like, that's just what you do in a randomizer. Cause usually there's, oh, there might be an item here. There might be an item there, but it's like now, well, one thing that was really, really funny about Ocarina of Time specifically was like in randomizer, you don't go to the fire temple unless you get the hammer. Because mm-hmm. you need the hammer to access so many things. Yep. But in vanilla game, the hammer's in the fire temple. So when I entered the fire temple and I didn't have the hammer, I'm like, oh, this is just like normal, but like also awkward because I'm used to just playing randomizer. Right, right. <laughs> that yeah. was that was really funny. <laughs> or like you do a randomizer and then you like can't find the hammer outside of fire temple and then you're like, man, I can't believe it was vanilla location this is bs <laughs> ne- never lucky baby rage never lucky <laughs> holy crap but yeah what kind of Dude. challenge run would, would you uh would you do in the dkc tunnel let's let, let's let's Dude, brainstorm I've been for a little thinking bit thinking like, about yeah. i've been thinking about that so much lately yeah, let's let, let's do, uh, let's do a challenge run for dkc cuz like i did i did one recently i did the the 306% on bizhawk shuffler and oh okay yeah that, that took me like 
How long did that take me? Like a little over seven hours, I want to say. But I, I died a lot in Webwoods. <laughs> like you can't imagine <laughs> Webwoods being a pain in that in like a, a shuffler setting, and like yeah, it was a pain. Uh, it does that so? Does that like mix the uh, like all three of the games and all three of the yeah, stages yeah. in the games? Okay, okay. You're essentially that, like playing the three games at once, but at like uh, randomized intervals. Like I think. The interval I, I I chose was like between ten and forty five or something like that. So like uh, essentially like you start with DKC one or whatever, right? Like you play DKC one mm-hmm. for like a random amount of time that is between ten seconds and forty five seconds, and once that is reached, it switches to either DKC two or three, and that that order mm-hmm. is, can also be randomized. I see, and, yeah. and so on and so forth for like on, on the rest of uh. A, of the playthrough it's like yeah you end up playing like all three games at once does it like set flags for every time you finished like a stage or whatever so you don't go back there again uh well it's it's just it's it's the it's the individual games right okay so like you, you, you it's three different roms that are open so like you oh, like when you oh, finish, I see, I when see, you finish I like see. a level in dkc1 with all the bonuses then like that's that's done in dkc1 right i i get it now i yeah, get yeah. it now yeah yeah that makes sense yeah it's, it's, it's cool. three different roms but yeah like i thought that was a cool challenge run uh despite the fact that you know emulator uh stuff and like you know, input lag and all the all the cool stuff that comes. Having used a different controller, unless you have that adapt that RafNet adapter, yeah, where you yeah, can yeah, like, you exactly. know, do whatever. And like but... you know, Webwoods deaths. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, oh, oh, overall, I thought it was a lot of fun, and I thought that was like a really Heck cool yeah. and interesting challenge. And like, yeah, I was. I, I I I don't know if like there are others. Like, yeah, you like have, you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously. I mean, like. For DKC one in particular, there's obviously the whole donkey only run, right? Mm-hmm. But like, you know, that's that that one's I think kind of like you know had its time. In a that, way, that, that one feel. has been solved already. Yeah, it's like yeah. just been around for so long that it's yeah. kind of just it's like whatever. people can speed run that category now. So yeah, genuinely. Yep. And um, what was the other thing? Like, there, there's blindfolded. Um, that's mm-hmm. that's a, that's, a, that's a that's another type of challenge run. Um, I don't know how you feel about the whole blindfolded thing, because like you know, some people they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna make a route, right? And then, but like sometimes in a form of like it streaming content, I guess, like if you just go in, not. Not with nothing, no practice or whatever. It's very not realistic that you'll actually beat the game or whatever, or yeah, like even really yeah, get close. Yeah, but so, so so let's make this clear, like right off the bat, like when people do blindfolded speed runs, like they prep for that run a lot. <laughs> like yeah, they 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 probably prep for that run more than like an actual like not blindfolded speedrunner would prepare for a run. So like <laughs> yeah, just just so you, you guys know. <laughs> Yeah, that that is that is usually how it works. It's yeah. like it's like studying, having notes, backups for certain things, like mm-hmm, all that, yeah. all that jazz. But like, if I were to like say, I don't know, boot up DKC one and just do a blindfold, I'm just gonna try it. You know, like yeah. it's like no way I'll get anywhere. I might beat the second level if I'm lucky. You yeah, know? If, if you're lucky. Yeah, but well, that's real. gonna so take you like, like you know five game overs <laughs> yeah exactly so it's just like it, at that point it's not even really as much of a of a challenge run as it would be like just a thing to do for fun on stream like more than yeah. anything else and like but yeah like i don't know i've been thinking about like ways to just like make dkc kind of like more because like i see all these like interesting weight like you know obviously there's like pokemon randomizers challenges with like the whole nuzlocke or iron mon then there's like you know i I, like with pi doing the uh the five hit thing for ocarina of time uh randomizer and uh, that was also another challenge run i don't know like enough ways to like make dkc like have those types of like unique vibes you know i guess dkc doesn't feel like as um i guess flexible in that sense doesn't feel like as does it doesn't feel like it has the same depth as a game like Ocarina of Time would have for challenge yeah. run. Like, less challenge run potential. Yeah, exactly. There is always playing with your controller upside down or playing with your head upside down, you know? There's always those things. Uh, who who so was like, doing the, the, the Honey honey Slathered controller? 
Somebody did that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, play, play, playing Ocarina of Time with, like, my controller covered in honey or whatever. That sounds gross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I don't remember who that was, though, but I, I, I do... I do know that that was a thing that someone did, but like, yeah, if, if anyone knows, <laughs> uh, hit us up in the comments. I think that like, dude, upside down DKC, you just lay on your bed upside down with the controller upside down too. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, I mean, I don't know, like there's probably like, you know, you could like do a mod that like reverses your controls or whatever, like, you know, crowd, crowd yeah. control style or whatever. And then crowd you just control, like complete yeah. the game as such, but it's still like, it still requires an extra thing on top of the game. Whereas yeah, like exactly. Ocarina of Time or like, you know, Kaizo Iron Man just requires the game. Although like, I guess yeah. like Kaizo Iron Man is... requires you to randomize the game, but still. Yeah, 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 I guess the closest thing we had were like the enemy randomizers with how crazy those can get where you have crushes and water levels or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those things are kind of interesting. Yeah, but... I haven't done. I, I, like, I, I do like the DKC entrance rando, but like mm -hmm. when you add the entrance rando on top of the enemy rando, like that that sh sh shit gets crazy, really. Like, I don't know if you, I don't know if you've done it. I haven't done it, but I've watched it. I watched you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, <laughs> That, that's that's why I haven't really done enemy rando on top of entrance rando very often. Like I, I might have done it like twice. For the most part, sections. I stick with uh, just entrance rando because entrance rando by itself is pretty chill. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah, <laughs> enemy rando is just <laughs> it gets too wild, man. There's like a mincer that's just like. <laughs> spinning or whatever yeah, like yeah. in one you, spot and you just you'll, can't you'll get, you'll get like the random mincer that will just like snipe you off screen it's like oh okay <laughs> thanks <Yeah>. man <laughs> <laughs> but yeah do you, have, do you have like any other like ideas or is like the challenge runs for dkc in particular yeah yeah oh man i i because like i've been trying to figure them out for myself like so for real, like, I just kind of been, like, thinking about more ways to, like, kind of, I don't know, like, extrapolate, I don't know. Like, just expand on DKC, like, more ways to play DKC, more ways to have fun Yeah, like, it. more categories, pretty much? Kinda, yeah. Like, uh, there was, like, one kind of idea that I had about, like, doing, like, multiple categories in, like, one go uh for dkc i don't know if like i don't know how it would work because like you could do like for example like in any percent run that's also like like you do like any percent route and then like go back to world one and then like all stages and then like do like nms and then do like uh, okay. or something like but like, like, some, but like something without kinda... but like without resetting the console or something yeah something like that mm -hmm. like just it all in just like one go yeah, like that, yeah like that was like one kind of like idea that i had that was like oh that'd be kind of interesting like like, like or, the, the dkc marathon or whatever yeah, yeah like but like you would do it all yeah without resetting the console and i think like even just without beating k rule like where you just you genuinely just do it all like going back or whatever the only oh, thing is like oh okay okay so that that's that's more interesting than i thought then. yeah it's like yeah, yeah. You, do, you do all stages and then like you go back to wall one and then you do like a different category and then like you go back all of this before the, like and then at the very end of it like you beat k rule once yeah yeah <laughs> one time <laughs> one time baby yeah. Yeah. that was like a, an idea that i had that i kind of wanted to like dig more into but i never really like i, I it was like oh this is cool and then i just kind of like set it on the table and was like oh right. we'll, we'll, yeah, talk yeah. About that. we'll talk about that one later <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean I, I feel like there's potential like what, yeah. what, what i thought of doing myself for dkc2 was just like doing like a bunch of categories back to back to back but i would still like you know reset the console it would still like be like considered yeah. complete runs not just like yeah. you know replaying the different runs in the same file yeah but uh and then I, like I, I i do think that idea is interesting though yeah i'm still trying to see like didn't like izzy do 101 rbo 101 <laughs> wasn't that like a thing is at some point wait izzy uh the uh the japanese runner oh uh issy yeah 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 uh, uh 
Yeah, he. I think he did like RBO, RBO 101. Though. 101 percent. Yeah. I. I mean, maybe. I, I want to say that see... like Tonkatsu might have like talked about that category a while ago. But... Yeah, I think I saw him do it like once or twice on stream. I don't actually know like how that even works. <laughs> I can't even begin to like break that down but like <laughs> well i mean it's it's just like rbo but you get the bonuses <laughs> <laughs> all the bonuses all of the levels you have yeah to everything <laughs> yeah well I, I guess it would be interesting though because like you would have to like re-enter worlds to like like say um when you do uh world five and rbo like you wrong warp to elevator antics right so like you would have to like Complete Wall 5 and then, like, re-enter Wall 5 and then, like, do ODA and Trick Track. And then what? Then you, like, funky to sprites to Wall 6 and, and Wrong Warp from there, like... And then you need to go to Torchlight, right? And then beat World 4 101%. And then re-enter. And then, re and do, and then do the first blast and Yeah, so I, guess, I guess because you can just re-enter the world, it's, like, not that crazy routing-wise. So mm -hmm. it can work out, but, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but, I, but yeah, that's that. See, that's that's a good point. That like it, it's it's a it's a cool and interesting thing. That like once again, like we're reaching like depths in speedrunning. That like uh, we're actually like starting to like make up new categories to like keep the games like new and interesting. Like keep keep things fresh. Really, like this uh, RBO one hundred one percent idea, for example. Like you know. Three or four years ago, people would have been like, RBO, it's like, you, it's, it's so hard, it's so, it's so impossible. <laughs> to, now you want to get all the bonuses? Like, come on. <laughs> why would you do that? TTT jump roll. Yeah. Why, why, like... why, why would you add the jump rolls and trick track and RBO? Like, come on, that category is so hard already. <laughs> so good. But yeah. Oh, man. I don't know if, yeah. like... Um, that that's like you know you you ran you ran Sonic two like I don't know if like it's a thing in Sonic two where like people keep creating like categories to this day to keep like had, things like... things new and and uh, interesting. Yeah, we had a that game. Well, the completion category for Sonic Adventure two is so long. It's like eight eight nine hour run. Yeah, so it's, it's like... uh what is it called like one hundred one and one eighty emblems or something. That's what it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, which is ironic because you don't actually collect everything technically in that category. There are upgrades that you do not need in that, <laughs> in, to get 180 emblems. So you don't get all the upgrades, but you do get all the emblems, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But you, you know, um, you know what remind what that reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, I think it's like I think there was like a uh, a debate regarding that in the uh, Metro Dread recently. Once again, like I don't oh, know really? if like that's still the case. At this point in time but like dread is like the the main upgrades they like don't count towards percentage okay so like you can like get a hundred percent but skip like this uh item that would otherwise be required for uh progression like progression items like you know uh whatever like say, say you skip like plasma beam in like mm -hmm. Super Metroid, for example, like just to like put you a parallel in that, and like Plasma Beam wouldn't count towards percentage, but like you would still get a hundred percent. Like the hundred percent speed run would skip Plasma yeah. Beam. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And then it's like that's kind of when you separate, like, or like if if somebody wants to, like, oh well, how cool is it to get this upgrade and add it into the completion category, which would be like a one hundred percent no major skips or yeah, yeah. Or, or it would be like you know thing. you would have like a hundred percent. And then a hundred percent item completion or whatever. Yeah, it's like yeah, another exactly. um, clause on top of that. Yeah. In the case for like one hundred eighty emblems in Sonic Adventure Two, we're talking like one upgrade, I think. Okay. <laughs> so it's just like we're talking like a couple of extra steps. So like it's that alone kind of prevents it from being its like own thing. Yeah. And like I guess like the whole restriction of getting A ranks in levels is another thing that kind of adds so much value to the stages already that it's like okay we'll just keep going. Right, yeah. And also the run is eight hours long, so like eight not, freaking 
if you're if you're if you're really good <laughs> yeah yeah if you're really it's, good because i feel just, like you it's know, just under nine or ten hours is more common i don't know like how many people have done runs of that category but more people than you would think actually yeah. uh, but at first it was when i was like first running the game there was only like six times on the boards now i think there's like 25 or maybe 25 or 30 mm, i'm yeah. just kind of just guesstimating in the top of my head one of my buddies he did a run and it was it took him 25 hours jesus fuck. 25 <laughs> he did it non-stop, non-stop. <laughs> i joined voice call like multiple times while he was doing that run <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm like dang you're still going at it like that's crazy <laughs> still going strong man keep it up i'm gonna go play Yu Gi Oh now <laughs> <laughs> Come oh, come back from that tournament four hours later. Oh, you're, you're still you're still going strong, man. Still going strong. Yep. Keep it up, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like I like because I know back in the day the only one I really knew from like running that category was Talon. Yeah, Talon was definitely the person to like popularize like yeah. 180. He, Champion he that category. Like, yeah, he was like the only person to have record in 180 for like forever. Like. And then he eventually got bopped by a uh, Katie, and uh, she like, she. And then I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not even a hundred percent sure who has record now. I think Trader does, but either way, Talon was definitely like, like making that category super duper popular. And a big thing about that game is like a lot of people played in like the Chow Garden for fun, like growing up or whatever. So there's a lot of like nostalgia about the Chow Garden, but it's not really that interesting for the speedrunner uh however in 180 you are forced to do the chow garden uh for uh extra ch extra emblems that involve training and raising a chow so that they're okay. they can win certain things or whatever i see i so, see so yeah uh that but that's like a two i think it's like a literally a two hour segment <laughs> like it takes like a long time to do that <laughs> Hanging in the garden for two hours. Oh, yeah. Literally. Yeah, it, it's just, it's very much like auto scroller esque. Yeah. yeah. So, I'm not, e see, I'm not even too surprised that the category is like more popular nowadays. Cause like, we were just talking about challenge runs. Like, that's a pretty yeah, good example like of a challenge run. Like, just yeah, the length itself makes it a yeah. challenge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's like, Collecting like the A ranks is another thing. It's just because of how hard they, how hard it is. Oh my gosh, my <laughs> <laughs> blurry tunnel. All right, blurry here we go. Focused all. again. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like the getting all of the A ranks. I, I tried getting A ranks in that game as a kid. It was hard. It was really hard. Like trying to get enough points to get an A rank in a lot of the stages. I was just like. I can't do this some of the yeah. time so I, I, it was just like a progressive i come back to it every now and then and try again but like seeing somebody do all of it in just one go and anytime you mess up an a rank in a level you have to play it over again yeah you which is like you get you know a few points shy b rank gotta play it again like yep. that is a huge time loss every single time that happens and sometimes you know what will happen to most people that like first pick it up is they'll run into infinites somewhere at one of the stages they'll run into an infinite where they're just stuck trying to get an a rank somewhere yeah, like, yeah. Or like whether they keep dying because if you die even if you have a checkpoint in that game it takes all of your points away so even if you die with a checkpoint, you have to start over. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because you because you have to go get those points again. Yeah. So like, I haven't played SA two yet, but I've played Sonic Heroes, and the rank system I think works the same in that game as yeah, in SA two. Sure. So like, yeah, if you if you die and like you, you get back to a checkpoint, then like it's really that much harder to get an A rank because like you have no rings, your score takes a hit, and like both those things count towards the A rank yeah it's not it's it's kind of you know develop development wise it's like oh well, this seems so hard for the speaker and it's like well it wasn't meant to be done in one go you yeah, know? yeah exactly. <laughs> so that's uh, that's what makes the challenge you but, know that's what makes the challenge interesting in a sense yeah. but yeah, yeah exactly <sighs> anything else gamer tunnel that you want to cover yeah. I liked everything that we talked about. I think we got we got some good conversations in. I had a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's that's gonna be that's gonna be that for episode three. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap things up. And once again, uh, make sure to drop your questions in uh, the comments down below for uh, next week's hopefully uh, next uh, Q and A segment. Because uh, yeah, next the, 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 segment. the segment this week was really good, and yeah, mm -hmm. we'd love to do that. Heck yeah. Cool. 
Zero Gamers, rolling off. <laughs> <laughs>